thank all of you for coming. Uh, we are excited about, this is the beginning of something just huge for Back to Basics. Um, we have constantly, historically, responded to the needs of the community in, in all types of areas. But this we want to kind of really focus in on health. And we have an amazing person that's with us, you know, as a coordinator to deal with our public health issues and our public health projects. So we're excited to, I want to bring her on and let her do the introduction. Uh, I am Pastor James Giles, the President and CEO of Back to Basics Outreach Ministries. And this is our humble abode in, in Mikasa Tuka. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. I'm Jennifer Chaudhry, and I'm the um, good evening. <laughs> I'm the public health coordinator for Back to Basic and a fellow from Erie County Health Department. We are having this quit smoking event to create more awareness in our community about health and to build a healthy community among us. This is one of many public health events that we're going to host, and you can get updated from our Facebook page. I would like to thank each and every one of you for coming here tonight with us. And thanks to Erie County Health Department fellows, my Back to Basic families, and our honorable host. <clears throat> and a special thanks to our host, um, Pastor Jaws, who is the president and CEO of Back to Basic. I'm very excited to present our speaker. Uh, from CAI Roshan Smalls, the program manager of Advanced Tobacco Free Communities, Mr. Smalls works in Erie and Niagara Falls County and focuses on increasing the ability of tobacco free outdoor spaces and reducing exposure to secondary smokes. And our another speaker, Dr. Khan, who joined Roswell Park Cancer Center as a scientist in 2011. 2022, Dr. Khan was appointed as a research assistant professor of oncology. He is also a director of our Bangladeshi community called Basco. We hope this is not just a stepping sto stone for you to stop, but also encouraging other people to stop the smoking. The truth of the matter is smoking cigarettes does contribute an early death. Please join our <coughs> very um, own speaker, Mr. Roshan Smalls, to begin our program. Thank you. Blessings, everyone. Good evening. Good evening. She mentioned my name is Roshan Smalls. Uh, to emphasize the word Smalls, right? So you always remember me. My name is uh, Roshan. Um, I am the, you mind if I just step up? Because I'll step up the mic. These things kind of like, you know. Um, so I'm program manager for Advancing Tobacco Free Communities. It's a part of New York State's chronic disease prevention agenda. Um, so the goal with that prevention agenda is to reduce um, smoking rates throughout New York State. Um, and part of my work is mostly policy driven. And so let me give you an example. Does anyone have a cigarette? Does anyone have any smokers? Can I get a cigarette? Mm. <laughs> Um, it's a shame to bring them out. <laughs> yeah. But see, the interesting thing is this, uh -oh. right? Oh, we got a lighter. Thank you. Oh, yeah. You got a lighter? Yeah. Do you know there was a time in this state where you could smoke just about anywhere indoors? Yeah. Yeah, Do you know that? Yeah. Where the very act of me holding this with the threat of me lighting this was like, why would it be absurd? But all of you in here, I got your attention because all of you are looking at me like I done lost my mind. <laughs> and maybe I have. A lot of people who opposed the New York State Clean Indoor Act thought that state legislators were losing their mind. Just like they said when seatbelts were regulated in New York State. They said the state... The, the lawmakers done lost their mind. Why, why the hell we got to wear suit belt, seat belts in a car? So part of, my, part of the work that I do is policy driven so that spaces like this exist where if someone were to come in here and say, hey, can I light a cigarette up? You look at him like he's crazy and you look at her like she's crazy. You know why? Because you are fighting for your health. You are fighting for the health and well-being of people that are next to you, even if you do smoke. 
right? That's being aware and conscious of the fact that what you're doing, on some level you know is causing you harm and could potentially cause the next person, a, uh, 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 your, your neighbor harm. So we look at the law of New York State Clean Indoor Act, and I'm only referencing that because I think it was a, a great starting place, is that places like parks, playgrounds, we have this beautiful young child here, right? You go to a park. There's this expectation that when you're at this playground that if I were to light that same cigarette up at that playground, how would you feel about me? What would you think about me? You think I'm, I done lost my mind again, right? You know why? Because you know. And I'm not telling you nothing that you don't know. I believe that everyone in here on some, to some degree knows that secondhand smoke is dangerous. The U.S. Surgeon General has said that there, that's the highest medical official in this country, right? Has said that there is no safe level of exposure to secondhand smoke. There's no safe level of exposure. Tobacco contains over 7,000 chemicals in it many of which are carcinogenic. They cause cancer. They're cancer-causing agents. So when you smoke, the secondhand smoke causes harm, even if you're doing so outside. Because if you can smell it, you are inhaling it, and it is causing harm to you. Now, I want to say, I'm not here to, I'm going to move around a little bit. What they're doing, and it sometimes gets internalized as, I don't like you. But I love her to death, but oftentimes it comes out. I don't want anyone in here to feel like I dislike you because you smoke. I dislike the act of smoking because I know that it causes harm. Vape. I ain't going to ask anybody, anybody <laughs> vape. Ouch. I don't even want you to raise your hand if you vape in here. Guess what? See, this is this is part of my work is educating about how the tobacco industry reinvents itself. Right? So let me I, I know I want you to hold vaping in the back of your mind right here. Keep it here for a minute. There was a time in this state uh, in, where the tobacco industry did not have filtered cigarettes. You know, the little cotton piece that they put on cigarettes. Any, anybody in here remember that time you old? You old enough, you seasoned enough to remember where they would put the filter in the cigarettes. You know why they did that, brother? Why they put the filter in the cigarettes? Part of it was this health, they jack, they're jacking the health message, right? These are safer cigarettes. You inhale less of the toxins, right? So what happens today, that was way back when. Today, They've reinvented themselves, said we got a safer alternative to combustible cigarettes. And I'm sure the doctor will probably talk about this later on. And what's that safer alternative today that they're promoting? Vaping. Vaping. So if you picked up a vape instrument, you know what? You probably said to yourself, this is safer than tobacco. Combustible cigarettes, right? You don't have to say amen. I know we in the church, but <laughs> if you picked up a vaping instrument, You've said to yourself, oh, this is not as bad as combustible cigarette. And on some level, you might be right. Right? You might be saying, hey, that's a safe alternative. But there's a great deal of research that says vaping is harmful. Mm -hmm. It's destroying your lungs, too. You know what else? The chemical that's in it? Can someone guess what the chemical in vaping? Many of the vaping products that are being sold? Could, could someone say that again? Nicotine. 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 And among other chemicals, right? You got some a bunch of other stuff that they just add into it. Because some of this stuff ain't even regulated. You know what I mean? We just catching up to regulating vaping products. So whatever you've been using, if you've been using a vaping product, you've been using a bit of, little bit of everything. And so the thing with the nicotine is an extremely addictive substance. So you're still using nicotine. And you're using unregulated levels of nicotine. Because vaping products technically are considered nicotine. It's considered synthetic nicotine. And for that reason, it fell out of the scope of regulation. And therefore, they were allowed to do just about anything they wanted to. It's just like going to the weed man on the corner. Right? Yeah, I know. You, you liable to get anything. Come on, now. Y'all act like I'm 
I'm out here by myself now. I ain't been to the weed spot before. See, now I know we in church. I get it, but I'm just saying. If you go to the corner, corner joint, if you go to the spot that you know is reliable, right? You go to that spot, you know it's reliable. Somebody know what I'm talking about. You go to the spot because you know it's reliable. You go to that spot every time because you know my man, he got what I'm, I'm going to get consistency there. Quality improvement, why quality control, like McDonald's. You go to McDonald's, you expect the same thing. You go to the weed man, you expect the same thing. You go to get your vaping products, you don't know what you're going to get. You don't. You gambling. You gambling with your, your health. And I'm not, again, I'm not, I'm saying I get it. Because nicotine is one of the most addictive substances in the world. I watch my wife struggle with it every day. And it, and it hurts me because, you know, I, I know that it's cutting her life short. Right. I know it's cutting her life short. Pastor Joe, you know my, my family, you know my wife. It's cutting her life short. And I'm, I can't do nothing about it. Try as you may. But I will tell you this, though, just on a happier note. You know, um, she has... The, our personal policy is that she doesn't smoke in the house. And she tries to avoid smoking in front of her son. I have a five-year-old beautiful son. And um, she tries, she works not to smoke in front of him. And she definitely doesn't smoke in the house. She did it one time when she was mad at me. And she told me when I came back. You know, but that was out of spite right there, right? But she's never smoked in the house one time. But except that one time. Recently, though, she would come home from work and she'd have a cigarette like, boom, about 9 o'clock before, you know, she settled down. Probably about maybe three, four weeks she hasn't had a cigarette at night. I, I didn't tell her that. I did not tell her that. She started, she made the choice on her own. So when it comes, and I'm sure the doctor will talk about when we talk about addiction. I'm not here to talk about how to quit. That's not my work. She made the choice on her own. As hard as I've been trying to press her to get to stop smoking, none of it worked. She made a choice on her own. But I will say what helps her is the personal policy that we have. And I started off with the New York State Clean Indoor Act, right? All across the state, parks, beaches, playgrounds, recreational spaces. I work to protect those spaces from secondhand smoke. A lot of people don't like me because of that right there. My family calls me tobacco police. Um... Which is why I try not to talk about the work I do around them, because mostly everybody in my family smokes in the house. And that's the issue in the black community that I have an issue with. You know, how we're being marketed to and targeted by the tobacco industry for tobacco-related products. Right? Um, but the thing is, our personal policy is that she doesn't smoke in the house. And what that does, especially in the wintertime, it reduces how much she does smoke. Because now she says it's too damn cold outside. So that's what she said. I got to clip this. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You be like, and I'm like, yes. You know what I mean? She said, I got to clip this. And so, I mean, for, for purposes of, you know, those who do smoke, I mean, and you have a partner, I think that's something maybe you want to discuss about. But the whole piece that I wanted to talk about, aside from, you know, just my personal is the work that I do, and I talked about beaches, I talked about parks, I talked about recreational spaces. These are sacred spaces where children play, where we live, where we work. We want to protect those spaces. You go outside, there's a sign outside that says, no smoking. It's there for a reason. And all we do is want to just nudge people, just nudge them, to just honor that. Because you, what you're doing is harming other people. I know it's your personal right, but what you do is harming other people. Right? Yeah, hey, amen. I know. I ain't, look, I told you I ain't here to bash smokers. I do want to tap your conscience. I do want to just tap it a little bit to make you just be conscious that when you're in that playground with your child, when you're there, just be mindful of the next child that's there. When 
you are in your apartment. I know I'm touching on a, this is a sticky one right here. When you're in your apartment, be mindful of that. Because guess what? That smoke travels through ventilation. It travels through pipes, tubes, electrical sockets, under the doors, out the doors, and it's going to it's going to go into the next apartment. In that next apartment, there's a beautiful young girl who's in that apartment inhaling that second in smoke. So I just want you to start thinking about sometimes we don't make those connections right there. So some of the work I do involves policy work about that right there. How to protect seniors who are living in homes with, from second in smoke. Those things right there. Yes. So Rashawn, uh, I suspect the biggest challenge, and, and I... I originally was an addiction counselor, mm -hmm. so I understand you know, how strong addictions are and how compelling they are to do what is even contrary to what the person's well being. What I have trouble with is the warning sign. I have some people right here. And and it's not registering in the in the brain that mm -hmm. this could happen to me. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, and back in the '60s, uh, when the, you know when the Surgeon General posted, you know, cigarette smoking is hazardous to your health. Mm -hmm. It said that on the side of they still say your, that your, your policy. They still your, say that. Yeah, your policies. Uh, you know, they and yet cigarette sales went up. Mm -hmm. uh, and then. Say even here, the sign out there it says no smoking. Mm -hmm. I have people here mm -hmm. that will disregard the sign. Anybody in here? Anybody in here now? I'm not going to point the finger. <laughs> <but they're laughs> they are, that will disregard the sign, and you and when they see me, they'll put it out. Mm -hmm. But the sign didn't help gotcha. me not to gotcha, go by gotcha, gotcha, that. Gotcha. So I, it, it, it's a it's a challenge. Frustrating yeah, challenge. it's a right. challenge. It's sometimes a challenge getting people to wear seatbelts, right? Yeah. I, I tell people every time I get in my car, brother, you have to put your seatbelt on. Man, you know, because it's going to save your life. And, and part of the work we do is try to, how, we, how can we normalize that's it, having that's respect for the sign? How can we normalize it? How can we get people, like the, the cigarette, I lit the cigarette, y'all looking for about to lose my mind. That's because we've normalized it. It's possible. Mm -hmm. It just takes some time. It takes events like this with people having discussions. And look, we can disagree with it and say, look, I just dislike smoking, but I'm saying, all right, let's find that, that space where we can protect the children. Mm -hmm. Let's find a space where we can protect each other. And we know that secondhand smoke causes harm. This is about protecting um, each other. So I know I'm, I talk a little bit. You know, my father is a preacher too, so I got to. Yes, there's one question. Um, question. What did I do? Because we do do a lot of community education, community mobilization around how tobacco industry is targeting our communities and how we can stop the next generation. That's what the work I do is about. How can we stop tobacco industry from getting to the next? Because they already got quite a few of us, right? And it's hard to get off. And I bet you smoke Newports. I bet my life on that. Yes. Yes. I want to say that I signed up for the Roswell smoking cessation. So you know you got to go through some weeks, like for six months. But when I went through the test, because I really want to quit, I had some close friends that died of lung cancer. Mm -hmm. It was real close to me. And I did the work, walk with them at Roswell. So what I want to say is this. When I went through the training, because I was serious about quitting, I need to quit. I'm going to walk with ashtray. And I know my lungs look ridiculous. But when I went through that training at Roswell, and I went through the first phase, they say I wasn't t uh, taking in enough uh, nicotine. nicotine. So oh, I was kind of crushed because I didn't qualify for the program. Mm -hmm. And that's at Roswell. Well, yeah. So maybe the doctor can talk to you because I don't work with Roswell, but I appreciate what you're saying. I think that's great feedback that they need to hear about. Yeah. Um, the last thing I want to say is, look, be kind to yourself. Be kind to yourself. 
trust me, nicotine is extremely difficult. My time is about up. They going they gonna beat me up in a minute. But be kind to yourself. Speaker, Mr. Um, Dr. Khan, please give a warm welcome to from back to basic. Hello, everyone. Good evening. Thank you to Back to Basic and also the, I can see Erie County Health Department people are here also, and the community members, everybody, welcome. So I would talk to you from a different perspective because we heard that people are smoking cigarettes, right? I would try to convince you how, or try to educate you how to quit smoking cigarette. Because uh, I myself, uh, a medical graduate from Bangladesh, and I smoked almost more than 30 years, smoked tobacco, smoked cigarette. And fortunately, I was able to quit smoking cigarette it's more than seven years now. And I did not smoke tobacco for over seven years. So before I go to my story of tobacco smoking and sedation, I, uh, I will tell my story, but I want to hear from you. Uh, can you please raise your hand who are current smokers? went back for two months, put for another three months, went back for two months, then I quit for 11 months, and the, what got me every time was picking up that first one. The first one. And I went back. Okay. Thank you for your uh, uh, sharing your uh, life story with us today. So I would start with my life story. How did I become a smoker and how I was able to quit. So why smoke tobacco? Why do you smoke tobacco? Somebody said that because of advertisement, because of friend, my classmates. I, was, I started smoking at the age of 17. I used to smoke to impress my girlfriend because it was cool. Recreation like uh, after a drink in a bar or in a stadium when you go light a cigarette. Social status, if you don't smoke, other people will say, oh, he's not a cool guy, he's a bad guy. So these were some of the reason I started smoking tobacco, cigarette. So cigarette contain nicotine. So when we talk about tobacco or, or cigarette, it basically include other products like gum, like vape, like the, there are small things, hookah, or various way of smoking tobacco or nicotine. So why did I continue smoking? Because all this product has in it a substance called nicotine which we are human are addicted to it. If we take it, next day we feel like to take more. Next week we feel like to take more. If we don't take it, we feel the crave to take it again. So because of that, I continued, all of you are still continue smoking. It's not because you want it, it's because your body are dependent, become addicted to nicotine. So that's why I continued for 30 years. What did I gain? What did you gain? First of all, lost money, right? That is very expensive. I think now in New York City, in here is probably $13 a pack, something like that, or, or maybe more. Then, uh, you know, all of you know, I work at Roswell, I know very well, health problems various health problem develop due to taking that nicotine or 
smoking cigarette, taking vape or any of those products. So that's what I gained. I had chronic lung infection for many years. Well, I moved to this winter weather almost 20 years, more than 20 years. Every winter I had to take two times antibiotic for my bronchitis because of that smoking. I had bronchitis, other people got other problem, I'll come back to those. So with all this, how did I quit smoking? It was gradual and it was persistent try. You cannot quit it within a day. It will take time, you have to do it gradually. You have to follow a certain way of quitting smoking tobacco or cigarette and I followed that. How did I do that? Initially, I stopped smoking in the house, then stopped smoking in my car. You know, I work at Roswell, right? Uh, in Roswell property, you cannot smoke. So I had to walk certain distance to get smoke. So once they banned it, smoking around, so that's, I stopped smoking around Roswell. So it's gradually, I, and then for probably one or two years, I stopped purchasing by myself. Then I used to call my friend, get a cigarette from that friend and smoke it. And I stopped seeing the friend who smoked cigarette. I stopped going to the place where people smoke cigarette. That's how gradually I was able to quit smoking cigarette. Now, I will tell you a few other issues. What are the health problems you may get by smoking cigarette? The data says that 480,000 death a year in this country just because of smoking tobacco, a cigarette product. Cancer, we all know, lung cancer, throat cancer, head and neck cancer, colorectal cancer, and the direct relationship with smoking cigarette. Heart disease, stroke, asthma, diabetic complication, Berger disease. I listed all of those here, chronic obstructed pulmonary disease. I had this problem gum disease, vision loss, preterm birth, who are pregnant, they can give birth to preterm child. HIV, you, you, you have more chance of getting HIV if you smoke tobacco, cigarette. Mental health problem, depression, anxiety. And sometimes men may experience difficulty in erection which negatively affect the fertility of women. So these are, if not all, most of the problem you might have if you smoke cigarette or tobacco. Now, here is a picture of, of a lung. I'm showing here. You can see the left side, healthy lung, pinkish, nice looking. And on this side, it's a smoker's lung, dark, filled with darkness and all this product from tobacco which is trapped into this. This is a lung, picture of a lung of a uh, smoker's lung cancer patient, whereas compared to healthy lung. So you can see those are smoking what your lung might look like. So when I quit smoking cigarette, how did that help me? Because my, um, or why should you quit smoking? So your chances of getting disease will go down. Then you will be less likely to get sick. Your, my breath was much better. 
my appearance was different within a month of after quitting smoking cigarette your blood pressure will go down the nicotine in your in in tobacco or cigarette will go to your kidney and it accelerate the secretion of adrenaline uh, from your adrenaline gan, gland which increase your blood pressure increase your heart rate so you feel palpitation when you smoke cigarette you will look healthier and you will be more energetic you will feel more energy if you quit smoking cigarette your teeth and fingernails the color will be different those chronic smokers this uh, area the color is different the gum color is they have a uh, grayish layer on that teeth if you quit all those things will go away and you will get a lot of time i started doing gardening in my garden these are some of the pictures i'm showing from my garden while i was smoking tobacco and cigarette i didn't have time to do gardening i used to go to the bar or other places now i had enough time to do gardening so it will change your lifestyle whole lifestyle will be different you'll have more money to spend you'll have more time to spend with your family at your work I used to go walk out of Roswell during the work day two or three times, walk further down, even in the winter, to have a cigarette. Since I quit, I don't have to do that. I, I have enough time for my work, for my family and everybody. And you don't have to worry when to smoke, when not to smoke. You are in a, in a party and you, you need to smoke, you have to get out. You don't have to worry about that, right? Yeah. Then... Your food will taste better. Your clothes will smell better. Your car, home, and kids wouldn't smell like smoking. The second and smoking effect will not be there. And you'll be able to smell better the flowers because the smell from your smoke is gone. Now you can smell the flower. You can smell the other things in, around your life, around in the nature if you quit tobacco. Let us pause on the... Sure. Clothes will smell better because most smokers do not realize that they carry the scent of smoke with them wherever they go. I don't care what it is that they do. The perfume can't get that smoke up out of that clothes. And for the non-smoker, they pick it up as soon as you get in their car. It could be dead in winter. As soon as you get in there, you know it floods us with that. So, Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, if you have any question, you can stop me. I'm fine. I'll, I'll go ahead. And so, and again, a few more reasons to quit smoking tobacco. So, you can set an example to kids like our little girl here or any other boy or kids that you don't smoke tobacco. They will follow you. Friends, family, co-workers will be proud of you. And you will be protecting your family and friends from second-hand smoking because second-hand smoking is as dangerous as the first-hand smoking. So you will not let your family and friends in danger. You will have more energy. You will get healthy to make sure that you are around to share family special moments. And here you can see a picture of my family. I think this is after I quit smoking around that time. So all these things are your advantage to change your lifestyle. So you have to think that you want to change your lifestyle. Yes, you smoke enough. I smoke enough. We harmed us enough, but now it's time to change. It's time to change. You know all this bad thing. So you have to decide. No one else can do that. Uh, I, I give lecture to that uh, Roswell to Tobacco Cessation Program. And I tell them the same thing. That there are patches. There are, there are anti-nicotine patches and other things. Yes, you can take those things to help you. 
but it's you. You have to think, why did you start? You have to think, what is the benefit or what is the loss you are getting by smoking tobacco? And then you will be able to decide whether to quit or keep it. I'm sure you are not suicidal, right? We don't want to commit suicide. We want to live a life. We want to see our grandchildren. We want to see our next generation. So we don't want to quit. We don't want to suicide. Smoking tobacco is like committing or moving forward toward committing suicide because all this disease. We, you don't need Roswell Park if you, all the people quit smoking cigarettes. And in the year of 90, 2007, I had to have a thyroidectomy because I had throat cancer. Didn't nobody really know that, but I had throat cancer. I had to cut my throat away all the way out, and they thought I would never speak again. This, thanks be to God, I'm still able to speak. But that's how much pressure it can take on you. It can cause a lot of stuff, a lot of problems for me. And I have issues right now. Sometimes you can't really understand what I'm saying. You ever notice that? And that's the reason why, because there's no more time. Yes. So, yeah, so he's a good example of that. That, like, the damage is already done, but still, if you quit smoking, it will prevent further damage. Yeah, so, so I'm, I'm, I'm coming to your, uh, uh, to, which might be helpful. Uh, I'm showing you some how to quit tobacco smoking. So how to make that, those plans. I have already told how I have done, but you have to do for your, like you were saying, you, you probably have bronchitis like I had. Every year, two or three times, I used to take antibiotic. Last eight years, I don't take any antibiotics because I don't have any bronchitis since I quit smoking tobacco. So, as I said, quit, quitting is very hard. Millions of people have been, but millions of people have been able to do it. It's hard, but you can do it. If I could do it, anyone can do it, right? And, but learn why you feel like you need to smoke, then you can prepare yourself to find the best way to quit. Why did you start it? at the first point. As I said, I started to impress my girlfriend. That's not useful anymore. I'm married, I have kids, that's gone. So I don't need to smoke. So find out your reason. You have bronchitis, I had bronchitis. Is that a reason? Maybe. So find out your own reason. Why do you want to quit? What is your own reason? Then. Like, as I said, learn why you feel like you need to smoke. Then you can prepare yourself to find the best way to quit. Make a list of all the reasons you want to become smoke-free. Now, make a list in your house, in your room, in your office desk. What are the benefits you will get if you quit smoking cigarette? Just make a list. Hang it in, 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 your, in front of your car while you are driving or in front of your desk in your office. That this is the reason I started, this is the reason I want to quit. So, um, I have a question. What about, like, what if people think that smoking tobacco is just harmful? What about chewing tobacco? Is that as dangerous as smoking? It's equally harmful. I'm coming to those points because it's nicotine. 
It's nicotine is the main addictive substance. There are many other substances which causes cancer and all those. But the nicotine is the substance which make you addictive. And all these other vape, different kind of product, all has nicotine. Because vape is a way of delivering nicotine. So it will make you addictive and it will have all the problem you will have if you smoke only regular cigarette. Yes. Even the, even the chewing gum, there are different things in, in, in many countries. They use various product. Uh, so all uh, uh, contains nicotine and nicotine is the main culprit in there. And, and take a look at the list to remind yourself why you want to quit. That's the first step. Then build your quit plan. Make a quit plan. Write it down. Set a quit date within the next few weeks, four or five of you. Set a date that I want to quit within this date. Then tell family and friends you plan to quit and your reasons for quitting. Tell them this is why you want to quit. And identify your smoking triggers. I'll come back to what are the smoking triggers. For me, tobacco, uh, coffee, Drinking coffee was a trigger. Drinking tea was a uh, trigger. Tea also has nicotine in it. So tea, tea is itself always very low level, but it has nicotine. So if those who are drinking tea, you might be addicted to nicotine also. Remember that. Coffee don't have nicotine. During the first few weeks, it will deal with uncomfortable feelings, temptation to smoke, withdrawal symptoms, and cigarette craving. You should remember that. It's hard, as I said, first few weeks, your nicotine is winning. Nicotine stay, I think, one to 10 days, it, it goes, it disappear. Within a month, it's completely gone. But it takes first 10 days is the most uh, difficult part. You will feel craving and you will have withdrawal symptom. I'll discuss those. And finally, you remove cigarettes and other tobacco from your home, car, work. Don't use other products with tobacco, as I saying, the vaping or anything else, else, because those are the same thing. And if you think that you need help, you can go to the doctors or pharmacies. There, there are, as, as I said, patches and other uh, a product available, you can use those too. But those would be the last step to do. The, these are the first step to do. Now, what are the withdrawal symptoms? You should know all this because you will face this if you want to quit smoking from next week. So the withdrawal symptoms are uh, so feeling down or sad, having trouble in sleeping, you will feel ir irritation, trouble thinking clearly and concentrating to work. If you quit smoking tobacco, restless, you'll be jumpy, heart rate will be slow, and you'll feel hungry. You may gain weight. Uh, first few months, I was eating more after quitting tobacco. I gained weight. You might gain weight too, because by uh, quitting smoking, your uh, uh, the appetite will go up, so you'll, you'll eat more. And most of this will go away within a few days to weeks, but the craving may stick around for a longer period. So these are the common smoking triggers, some activities, feelings, and people are linked to smoking. When you come across these things, uh, they may turn on your uh, arts to smoke, like when you are stressed or feeling down, when you are talking on phone or drinking alcohol, watching TV or driving, after a meal. Sometimes many people like to smoke after a meal. And when you are taking a break during the work, in a bar, when other is smoking, Cooling off after a fight or feeling lonely, I think I was, my previous speaker was telling that his wife was doing something like that. Even you might feel to smoke after sex. So all these are common triggers. 
So you should try to avoid the trigger for yourself when you are trying to quit smoking tobacco. How to manage those triggers? Anticipate smoking triggers and develop ways to deal with them. Go places that don't allow smoking. Shops, movie theaters, and many restaurants are now smoke-free, so you can go there, spend time. So you don't have to buy a cigarette, you don't have to smoke. Sp spend more time with non-smoker. Like, there are many non-smokers here, and you are not smoking because you're with us. Keep your hands busy, play a game, so you don't smoke. Remind yourself the reason why you want to stop smoking. That's the first thing. Why do you want to stop smoking? Remind yourself. Then you will see your triggers are going apart. You are no longer with the triggers. And then you make a quick plan again. Including all this, you make your own quick plan. What does that include? Combine quit smoking cigarette to keep you focused and confident and motivated to quit. So you have to combine the strategies. All the strategies or some of all the strategies I discussed, you find your, for yourself which strategies are good. You combine them and help you to, the, the, the quit plan help you to identify the challenges you will face as you quit and ways to overcome them. And this quit plan can improve your chances of quit, quitting smoking for good. So the key is your determination. It's you who can decide and who can quit making a quit plan. And I hope I will listen from those who are smoking. And thank you again. As I said here, we were not born with tobacco smoking habit. We should not die due to smoking tobacco. Thank you. So now I will ask you again, tell me your thoughts, the smoker. Tell me your name, please. Bobby. 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 Yeah. Uh, my thoughts for smoking. Quit for smoking. Quit smoking okay, after this have... conversation today. Okay, so I, I've got for me. My insurance doesn't cover them. My Medicaid or Medicare doesn't cover them. And I thought, you know what? It's still healthier and cheaper than buying cigarettes. If I have to spend my cash, I'm willing to do that. So I called New York State Quit Line. And they sent me 14 21 milligram patches and nicotine lozenges, and tomorrow is my quit date. Oh, that's great. That's great. That's great. I can, you were with the New York State, so Roswell also provide those drugs free of charge. So if, if you don't get it from New York State, you can contact Roswell. They have the program for providing those drugs if needed. But as I say, drug is the last option. First option from today, you determine that you are going to quit. Yeah, I am. Anyone smoker here want to say something about quitting? Yes. Thank you. So thank you very much. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you, everybody, for listening to me. Have a good evening, and I hope next time, if I see any of you again, you will be not smoking tobacco. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'd like to add something to the presentation. That was, uh, I thought maybe the doctor would hit on some of it, but. Uh, smoking is not just a physical addiction, so that you know that. It's why people, Diana has been on the patch and the gum 40, 45 times. And it's kind of 
it, and it's bringing nicotine, which is the substance that we're most of all addicted to, it's bringing that to her body. But her body is saying, yeah, I get that, that, but. Yeah, that might help a little while, but. It's not. It's, it's, it's why you can get all the gum you want and you'll chew it a while, but it's not quite enough, you know. So we are also addicted psychologically just to the behaviors around smoking. I got to have something in my hand and I have to blow on it and I have to breathe it in for it to satisfy. It's just not the drip, drip, drip of nicotine in my body. It's psychological now. I'm going to show you how psychological it is. I've been to prison now, and I've seen men come in with 25 years of smoking. And, and this was a long time ago. When you stepped in, no cigarettes, no nothing. Mm -hmm. Flat meal, bread, cheese, and that's it. And they would be in the wall, some of them would be screaming, I need an Edmund cigarette, I need it. But they would not get one. And by the second day, they realize that they are in a position, watch this, that I am not going to get this what my body is screaming for. And they will begin to settle down. I always used to encourage them, let's start working out. Right? Get your mind off of that. Let's start working out. And lo and behold, they will become accustomed to not having that nicotine. Something that they could not do in freedom to save their lives because they think if they don't pick up, if they don't puff, they're going to die. Yep. Yeah. And, and that's kind of what a habit is. So if I can get this into the game, it's not just physical. I got to get this into the game. When I stop, I just stop. Because I, I, I kind of ego, egomaniacal. <laughs> I stopped because I didn't want to be under control of nothing. Nothing. Nobody. It's the thing that caused me to stop. I wasn't a big smoker anyway. I didn't like the way it made you feel or made me feel. Uh, but uh, if I don't address this, that means I have people that have been two years without smoking, but all of a sudden, they go back, right? Diane, three months, she said three, three months at that time, your body physically has accepted the fact that you're not smoking. What has not accepted the fact is mentally. I have not accepted that. But your body physically said, okay, yeah, listen, listen. 90 days, we, listen, we don't need this. But mentally, you begin to think you do. Certain things that begin to trigger and say, yeah, I need to pick that up. I want us to understand just how challenging it is, but I cannot possibly do it without putting this in the game. Got to address the mental of smoking. I want everybody to know that. When you prepare to this, sometimes you have to work yourself up. You got to get somebody to partner with to say, we, you know, it's easy for we to do stuff than it is for me to do stuff. All right. yeah, yeah. You got to try to get a partner. You know, that way you challenge each other. Right? If we can do this. Except if your partner is the toxic one that keeps you smoking. <laughs> get away from that person. <laughs> All right. Uh, come on. Jennifer. Okay, so that'll be your